Hello and welcome to the first update of the Pilford Paintings. We're going to start this case off by visiting the two main galleries, the first of which is Armitage's. Mr. Armitage, can you give us the details leading up to and including the sale of the De Kuyper paintings? Let me see. It was early June. I received a visit from Hiram Davenport, a London solicitor. He informed me that his client had two new De Kuyper paintings that he wished to auction. I assume you checked the authenticity of the painting? Yes, as always. Everything was in order. He had in hand a certificate of authenticity signed by Pierre Dernay, the well-known De Kuyper expert. Did you meet Mr. Davenport? client. No, I dealt only with Mr. Davenport. What can you tell us about the auction itself? Mr. Davenport's client set very strict conditions regarding the sale. The auction had to take place on July the 1st and the public announcement was not to be made until June 23rd. Just one week to prepare. And as if that weren't enough, Mr. Davenport informed me that the paintings were to be sold as a pair. A pair! Odd. Wouldn't the seller be able to fetch more for them if they were sold individually? Unquestionably. It was a strange request. And how did the auction turn out? Due to the short public notice, many of the big bidders did not show. Mr. Brady Norris, curator of the National Gallery, was the successful bidder, as you know. I must admit that the paintings brought more than I had expected. Do you have any idea why that was so? Undoubtedly because of the energetic bidding from Sir Herbert Kaufman and Dame Magnus Smedley. So, Davenport has returned in this case. That was quite unexpected. Next up is the National Gallery. There were four of us on duty when the theft occurred. Our shift starts at 4 p.m., and upon our arrival, we prepare the gallery for its closing at 5. Now, on the day of the robbery, by a quarter past five, all the employees of the gallery had left for the day, with the exception of Sir Simpson and Mr. Norris. Was that unusual? No, sir. It is their custom to remain until the gallery is secured. I personally let Sir Simpson out through the main entrance at half past five. Mr. Norris stayed on because he was expecting a delivery. What time did the delivery arrive? I'd say it was a quarter to six when our Cummins and Goins wagon arrived. Charlie and I helped Mr. Norris and the delivery men unload one large crate and two smaller ones. Do you know where these deliveries were from? Well, I'm not sure about the larger one, but the two smaller ones were from Jardines. What happened after the crates were unloaded? The delivery men left. Charlie locked and barred the loading dock door. Mr. Norris went into the storeroom to check his shipment and I returned to the guardroom. Did you see him open any of the crates? No, sir, I didn't. What happened next? At half past six, Mr. Norris informed me that he'd locked the storeroom and would be leaving for the evening. And you let him out? Yes, sir, through the main entrance. Then I made my rounds through the office wing, checking all the doors to make sure they were secured. And how did you spend the rest of the evening? Looking after my rounds. I took the 11 clocker through the east wing. At about 11.10, all the paintings were in their proper place in Gallery 12. Then Charlie made his rounds, following the same path that I'd just made, except when he arrived at Gallery 12, the two De Kuiper paintings had been cut from their frames. What time was that? I answered his alarm at 11.35 and sent him to check the loading entry in the office wing. Have you any idea how the thief got into the museum? No, sir. The only keys to the outside doors are kept in the guardroom or in the custody of the patrolling guards. Sir Simpson and Mr. Norris are the only staff members who have keys, and even they only have keys to the inside doors. Well, that's all I know. I hope I've been of some help, sir. Yes, he was a big help. We have, we have certainly learned quite a lot of information there. Anyway, let's go to the French Embassy next. I am greatly distressed by the loss of the paintings, and I must say I regret not having had the opportunity to closely examine them. Why is that? For one thing, the circumstances under which they were acquired by the National Gallery might raise some question as to their authenticity, might they not? We had considered that. Such short notice for such a major art event is unheard of. But, of course, with no paintings to examine, there is no proof. Hmm. Well, I guess that is true. Next on the list is our friend, Inspector Lestrade. 
Won't need your meddling on this one, Holmes. We've got it all under control. How's that, Inspector? It was an inside job. All evidence indicates that the thief had a key. It appears he exited through an open window in one of the offices. We're checking out all of the guards and the gallery staff. Have any suspects? Uh, not at the moment, uh, but we'll get our man, I've no doubt. As much as he was short with us, he did reveal some evidence that we didn't know before. The last person on the list on this update is Langdale Pike. Ooh, my poor head. I believe I overdid it at Dame Agnes Bash last night. Did you hear anything there that might be of interest to us? I heard many things, Holmes. Mostly from the chattering mouth of Pierre Donnet, world-renowned expert on De Kuyper. He has managed to do shockingly well for himself, considering 20 years ago he was a starving artist. But then his ship came in. Whatever do you mean? In 1872, he discovered the first De Kuyper in a church attic in Brussels. Soon after it sailed to Rijks Museum in Amsterdam, he began a whole new and extravagant life. I suppose that's why he can afford to keep a luxurious suite at the Langham Hotel. Did his discovery of the De Kuyper catapult his own work into the spotlight? Hardly. Ooh. In fact, Donet has never sold a painting done by his own hand. And there we have it for this update. Voting is open again. Good luck. Take care. Bye-bye.